Good morning. A manhunt continues this morning as Vancouver police try to find the man responsible for a downtown shooting. Gunshots were heard at Hornby and Helmkin around 5 p.m. yesterday. The intended target was a woman on a mobility scooter. It was riddled with bullet holes, but the 43-year-old managed to get to St. Paul's Hospital where she was found by police. The shooter took off before officers arrived. He is known to police with the motive allegedly an ongoing dispute between the man and woman. Police say the woman is okay. After decades of pain, there is some closure for the families of two B.C. girls. The man police believe killed them is now behind bars. 67-year-old Gary Taylor Handlin has been arrested for the murders of Catherine Mary Herbert and Monica Jack. Catherine Mary disappeared when she was just 11 years old near her home in Abbotsford. Monica was last seen in 1978 riding her bike near Merritt. The 12-year-old's body wasn't found until 1995. There's no such thing as a cold case to the families, nor is there ever closure, only resolution surrounding the events. Handlin was initially suspected in the deaths, but investigators didn't have enough evidence to arrest him until now. But they're not saying exactly what that evidence is. Police have released his photo from the 70s, hoping someone may remember something more about him. Cold weather can mean tense times at BC Hydro. It's meeting a massive demand as British Columbians try to warm up. Reporter Greg Harper joins us live from a chilly downtown Vancouver. Greg? Good morning, Tamara. Well, a lot of le electricity is being used right now as more and more British Columbians uh, turn on the heat to try and keep warm. According to BC Hydro, Sunday night was close to breaking the all-time record as far as electricity use is concerned. On Sunday, between 5 uh, to 6 p.m., uh, the uh, amount, uh, the demand for electricity peaked at 9,346 megawatts. Now, the highest hourly peak demand ever, by the way, was recorded on November 29, 2006. Six. That was a Wednesday where it was uh, minus 11 at one point and there was a high of zero. The consumption reached over 10,100 megawatts at that point. A hydro was expecting near record numbers last night with consumption expected to peak at over 10,100 megawatts. That's the equivalent of powering 15 Ruskin generating stations at maximum capacity, so it's quite a bit of power. Uh, we generally see uh, electricity peak on weekdays between 4 and 8 p.m. And that's the time when people come home and they make their dinner, they do their laundry, they turn on their lights, switch on the heat and turn on the TV. So Hydro has released some energy saving tips here. Wash your clothes in cold water. Don't use the heat dry option on the dishwasher and use a programmable thermostat. Uh, so the heat is on only when you are home. So the numbers from last night, we don't know that yet. We've had heard back from uh, BC Hydro. Those numbers are expected around 7.30, possibly eight o'clock this morning. When we get those numbers, we'll bring them to you. Tamara? Thank you for that reporter Greg Harper for us in downtown Vancouver this morning. The reported abduction of an Israeli-Canadian woman by Islamic militants in the Middle East likely never happened. Ottawa has still not been able to confirm that she's okay, but several social media reports suggest Jill Rosenberg was not abducted by ISIS and continues to fight alongside Kurdish troops in Syria. A Facebook post claims the White Rock woman does not have regular internet access, so she hasn't been able to respond to speculation of her disappearance. Canadians are being urged to avoid putting their lives at risk of fighting overseas. 37 years after the first Burrard otter crossed the inlet, a shiny sequel is making the trip across the water. The new West Sea Bus has completed its maiden voyage from Lonsdale Key to Coal Harbor. The Burrard Otter 2 has bigger doors, windows and stabilizers for a smoother ride. It uses less fuels and fuel and dramatically reduces carbon and smoke emissions. The vessel offers more fold-up seats to accommodate bikes and strollers. Ottawa contributed $19 million toward the new Seabus, while TransLink chipped in $2 million.